All right, I'm back in town. So I'm gonna go pick up some water heaters. It's been a few days since I've been there. I don't think anyone else picks up the water heaters for scrap metal recovery. They just toss them if they sit there for too long. So I'm gonna get a few bucks that way. I sorted out all of the uh, copper and aluminum that I've been sitting on. So I've got all my pieces of copper here, all my aluminum there. Or no, excuse me, copper and brass, not copper and aluminum. I tried taking it in the other day and asked them what they had paid me for it if I just left it mixed together and they said 60 cents a pound, which is crazy because brass by itself is like a buck 50 a pound and then copper is like 240 or something like that. So I just quickly took five minutes to separate it all out. So I actually get paid what it's worth. And I'm gonna go do the water heaters, take that copper and brass in. And then while I'm at the water heater place, I'll probably check that dumpster as well and see if there's anything in there. There's a bathroom and kitchen remodel or hardware store in that same complex. And they often just throw out tons and tons and tons of brass and aluminum fixtures. So if I can get a little more brass and aluminum with this load, that would be good. And we'll see how things go from there. I am very tired from uh, traveling for work yesterday and today it was about a four and a half hour drive where I was headed to and then of course a four and a half hour drive back this morning so left yesterday midway through the day well earlier in the morning or late morning drove up got all the work done while I was there I got there actually about 40 minutes before I expected so I just walked around and picked up aluminum cans that had been scattered around this construction site and then found a little stack of uh, Pokemon cards while I was there as well, which was funny. Then, drove back this morning, Ugh. and then just straight into the work day, and now I'm getting a little bit of a break from the work day so that I can go out, get some scrap metal, take it in, and then tonight I'll be dumpster diving again and uh, get some good footage of that. So, should be a good haul. I'll probably throw the camera back on and see what it looks like if I do a little bit of a time lapse with the camera here instead of like back in this area where I have been throwing it. I think it'll look a little bit better uh, when when all is said and done because I'm not going to be holding the camera during a lot of the filming. And yeah, you can see I'm quite uh, quite tired compared to normal. So on to the water heaters. Okay, here we are. Can you see those water heaters back there? There's about, looks like there's about five or six of them. I'm gonna get the truck flipped around. So it's real nice and easy uh, to load them up. Yeah, five water heaters right there. Here's another one of those days where I was just tired, so I was going super slow loading up these water heaters, but there were five of them there. And I think I say this in the next clip, but then when I looked in the dumpsters, they had thrown like six or seven additional water heaters in the dumpster. Unfortunate that I was out of town and couldn't get to those, but that's Well, I got the uh, five water heaters and one little aluminum pan. The uh, unfortunate thing is though, I just checked their dumpster and they threw away a whole refrigerator and it looks like four or five more water heaters. And I don't have a way to get those out of the dumpster really. Um, not with how this one is set up sometimes, if there's something real big in a dumpster, I'll pull my truck up right next to it and then like maneuver the object part way out. So it's like kind of balanced on the dumpster. Then I'll get into my truck bed and then keep maneuvering it and, and see if I can get a soft landing in the truck. But uh, this dumpster has concrete walls on, all, on three sides of it and then a gate on the fourth side. So the side that I'd normally be pulling up to Marcus have anything? Marshall, I mean, uh, oh my gosh. He's almost full. Should probably flip around and get as much of that as I can. Um, what was I saying? Oh, so there's, there's just no way for me to get the fridge or the water heaters out of there, unfortunately. I would have loved to take that fridge. Um, water heaters, you know, they're another dollar or so, so not a huge, uh, huge gain or loss there, but the refrigerator would have been nice to get the, the copper uh, wires out of. And then it looked like it was stainless steel as well. Let's see here, you know, 
They've got a truck parked right where I want to back up. Maybe I'm not gonna do this one today. Let me flip this around. So that dumpster right over there that I just, just passed out of view. Oh, they've got two dumpsters now. That's the one that I normally go and uh, I take all the stuff out of for Marshall. These two right here, these have uh, sometimes yielded okay aluminum scrap. There used to be a, um, what do you call it, like a sign printing shop over here that would print a lot of like, aluminum, pictures on aluminum or uh, stuff like that. These look empty though. And unfortunately with where that truck is positioned, I'm not gonna be able to easily get the stuff from Marshall. Well, I could just walk it over to my car. I'm not gonna, I won't be lazy today. I'll, eh, maybe I will. But yeah, they've got two dumpsters now. Very interesting. Maybe I'll ask them if uh, they'll be in the way. I'm just gonna pull right up and start going. If they ask me to move, then I'll move. All right, they got a car they need to pull in first and then I'm gonna park and get this done. All righty. Now see if, I'll, if I can angle this camera so you guys can see the dumpster while I unload it, that would be cool. I don't know if I'll be able to though. This glove, so I've got two left-handed gloves right now. I don't know what happened to my right-handed glove, so put it on backwards and it, it works okay. Jeez, that car does not look like it wants to move. Yeah, so uh, I met Marshall last year when I first started getting into scrap metal recovery my wife and I drove past this area and we noticed he had just a dumpster overflowing with scrap, like just tons and tons of scrap metal flowing out of it. I thought surely there's someone that's just coming to pick it up from him and he's already got someone contracted. Well, a week goes by and it's still just over, like it's piling out the sides now, overflowing in every direction. Another week goes by, it's still there. So finally I just call him up and I go, hey dude, like I noticed you've got a ton of uh, scrap metal sitting out there do you have someone that's hauling that off for you or what's going on? He's like, no, actually uh, nobody's hauling it off and we've got even more on the inside. So it turned out he had like 200 pounds, no, maybe like 150 pounds of aluminum radiators and other aluminum scrap that they'd been saving up inside. And then about three-ish dumpsters full of, uh, there we go, of steel. So, uh, he told me, look, I know that, you know, normally this aluminum, like, we would sell it, but if you just take all the steel for us, we'll give you the aluminum for free. And I'm like, deal, but you know, that's a good deal. I'll take that deal any day. And since then, I've just worked to help keep their dumpsters under control. And they'll set aside all the aluminum radiators and stuff for me as, uh, as they continue to do work. So let's get this out of here and then uh, get back into the scrap yard before it closes today. All right, check out this monster of a piece that they had in there. It's actually just one piece that's taken up like the whole dumpster. So gonna bring that in with the water heaters and then we should be good to go for the day. That'll be the conclusion of everything I get right now, then headed back into work. And after that, do some evening dumpster diving. This is the long and windy road from the water heater place down to the scrap yard. And I swear on this drive, I hit every single red light. 
which is super obnoxious because I had over a thousand pounds of steel in the back, which, uh, you know, makes it a little bit harder to start and stop over and over and over again. And for one reason or another, I don't quite know why, because I had strapped everything down pretty good. I thought one of the water heaters was tipping back and forth real good every time I uh, stopped. Here's the crane. It's kind of fun to watch that for a bit. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that load brought in just over $50. That actually kind of blew my mind. I thought I'd be getting like somewhere between $20 and $30, considering I had, I had brass and copper. So I knew I'd be getting a decent bit, but I did not expect $50. So 50 big ones today. I'm gonna head back into the scrapyard now and see if there's anything worth pulling out. I've, no I've noticed a couple pieces of copper that had been tossed in there and anything out of the steel pile is 20 cents a pound. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna run in. I've got 15 minutes, they say, till they're closing this section and just grab uh, anything that's copper or aluminum that I could literally immediately turn around and resell them for, um, for more money. And let's just see how this goes. So I'm gonna show you guys the scrap pile and then we're gonna get to it. All right, as you can see, lots of stuff out here to go through. I see what might be a brass lamp out there, but that's what caught my eye initially. That's just copper right there. So I'm gonna pull that out and see if there's anything else to rummage and find here that I can either resell or strip down for more than 20 cents a pound. Okay, finished rummaging around in the steel pile. I found about four pounds worth of stuff, a pound of copper, uh, and then three pounds of aluminum and or stainless steel, probably one pound of aluminum, two pounds of stainless steel. So they charged me 86 cents for that. Uh, I'm gonna turn around and bring it home and not sell it back to them today because they've got, they're closing in just a few minutes here. But I'll uh, wrap that with my other stuff and immediately flip it for about a 200% profit because of that pound of copper. So when I sell the pound of copper back to them, that'll be $2 and some odd cents, 250. Let me see from the receipt what I got today for copper. Let's see, uh, number one copper, 280. So I'll get $2.80 $2 back from that. Plus I think stainless steel is uh, 30 cents a pound. And then the aluminum is gonna be 35 to 40 cents a pound. It's aluminum extrude. So I'll get four bucks out of it. Spent 10 minutes, got four or $3 profit there. Not a huge uh, deal, but for the scrap challenge, it makes a difference. I was, uh, I, I was talking to the guy after asking him some questions about how exactly the whole steel pile thing worked. Cause while he was back there, I saw somebody had thrown in a big barbecue grill that was, you know, the by, per weight, it's probably mostly aluminum and a little bit of steel. And then there was a bunch of wires and co copper wires and cords and stuff that's like attached to lamps and other things. So I was asking like, can I just go back there and like snip off the cords and then bring, you know, have you pay, you, you pay me 20 cents a pound for the cord and then I turn around and sell it to you at 60 cents a pound for the number two insulated wire. He said no, which I don't really understand because um, he's all, they've already purchased that as steel. So they pay a penny a pound right now for steel. So whoever brought that in, sold it to them at a penny a pound and it's in their steel shred pile. So all they do, that big crane, that hopefully you guys can see that in the time lapse. I don't know if I was sitting on the weight, the weight scale long enough for you guys to see the crane or not, but all it does is all day long, they just pick stuff up out of that steel pile and put it into a big truck and they sell it as steel shred. So they're, and they're probably selling it for somewhere between, I guess, five and 10 cents a pound, uh, which again, all of the copper that they've got in there, even if they turned around and sold it to me at 20 cents a pound, which is way more than they're gonna get anywhere else. And then I turned around and immediately sold it back to them at 60 cents a pound. Then they're gonna take it as number two insulated copper and turn around and sell it again at 80 or 90, or I don't know what, what they sell for, a dollar a pound. And so they're gonna make money on it twice instead of just making money on it once. So I think I just need to speak with someone that's maybe, uh, runs the place or is the manager of the place and explain to him what I want to do. Cause really all I want to do is go back in the steel pile for an hour with my wire cutters and my drill, unscrew a couple things, pull a couple things apart 
and buy it from them at 20 cents a pound if that's what they want and then sell it back to them at whatever it is once it's all sorted out, right? I'm putting the effort in. I'm getting them more profit because, right, they bought it for a penny a pound, then they sold it to me for 20 cents a pound. And then I'm selling it back to them for 60 or 80 cents a pound. And then they're gonna turn around and flip that for another profit again. So they should be able to see, I think they should be able to see reason on that. Uh, but uh, it might take a little bit of convincing. So we'll see what I can do. I, I wish they were open Saturday. So these guys are just open Monday through Friday and they close Friday at 4.30. And so I'll never be able to spend a lot of time just because I've got my some interesting metal on the road. Some I've got my day job to, uh, to run. But it would be very interesting to go spend two or three hours just combing through that steel pile and seeing what I can find because there is so much there that people throw in. Like literally, there's a, you know, one of the things I grabbed today was a, a piece of aluminum extrude about two, two and a half feet long that is 30 to 45 cents a pound depending on, geez, that's more, it's like a big old loop. I'm seeing metal all over the road right now. It's like somebody just dropping cash. But uh, anyway, I figure if I talk to the right person, I can probably convince them to let me go in, snip some wires and stuff because they're still making a hefty return on it the first time selling it back to me at 20 cents a pound when they bought it for a penny a pound. And then even if I'm selling it back to them again at, at whatever it is, um, they're gonna make another profit on that when they turn around and resell it again. So thanks for tuning in today, guys. I really appreciate all the support that you've given to the channel. We're up to 500. 115 subscribers. It just blew my mind when I saw that. Super excited. Halfway to the thousand subscriber mark that YouTube requires for monetization. Now, when this first gets monetized, I think the channel, based on views, will make something like 10 to 15 bucks a month. <laughs> so nothing huge. But what's cool about that is it starts letting me put that money into the channel so I can spend $15 maybe uh, or, or spend $150 and say I'm going to you know, pull forward the next 10 months of YouTube revenue and do something cool with it. Maybe buy some random stuff and scrap it, see, see what's on the inside or who knows. Um, but thank you guys for the support again. Always appreciate having you on here. Love the comments that you leave. It's always fun chatting back and forth with you guys in the comments and hearing your stories and all the things that uh, you guys have been through. And I hope you all the best. I'll catch you on the next episode of the Scrap survive on scrap challenge again 50 bones today i was not expecting that at all that was wild and it was mostly due i looked at the receipt yellow brass i had 17 pounds of yellow brass buck 50 a pound so that was 25 dollars and i had uh just about a thousand pounds of steel so that was another ten dollars and then the copper and such so anyway i'm starting to ramble and rant now Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day.